Hello there, brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless each and every single one of you. It is Hunter's Point here with another video. I do hope and pray that each of you all watching me right now are having a good Sunday night so far, wherever you all are at. I do hope and pray that each of you are all doing well. Yeah, I felt led to come on here and give you guys a news update, as I know it's been well over a week and a half since I've last been on here. I just haven't really felt led to come on here too much. I've been mainly trying to rest in the grace of our Lord, uh, focus a lot on Bible college, uh, really just doing what I can to rest in his grace and seek his word. Uh, it's been a difficult time for me, uh, a lot of uh, changes ongoing in my personal life, but you know, I'm getting through it. I'm getting through it uh, by the grace and mercy of the Lord. I am continuing to stay afloat and, uh, you know, the Lord's providing for me as he always does. But I wanted to come on here and give you guys an update, specifically on the cybersecurity front, uh, as it's been even longer since I've done an update regarding that. So without any further ado, I'm going to get straight into it. This is your one article world news update for the 13th of October, 2024. The article is off of endtimeheadlines.org and will be linked in the description box below as per the usual. Let's get right into the update. Iran's nuclear facilities and government branches have been struck by what are being called massive cyber attacks. According to latest reports, the Iranian government and the country's nuclear facilities have been hit by massive cyber attacks. While there's no information about when exactly this happened and who's behind the attacks, it is being said that some important information has been stolen. As per the local media reports, all three branches of the Iranian government, namely the executive, legislature, and judiciary branches, have been hit by the massive cyber attacks. Along with the Iran government branches, the country's nuclear facilities have unfortunately also been targeted by these massive cyber attacks. Iran International English quoted Firuzabadi, former secretary of Iran's Supreme Council of Cyberspace, as saying, quote, nearly all three branches of Iran's government, the judiciary, the legislature, and the executive branch, have all been hit by heavy cyber attacks and their information stolen, unquote. The former secretary of the Supreme Council of Cyberspace has said that many key areas in the country have been hit by these cyber attacks, including, unfortunately, again, the nuclear facilities. They weren't spared. And Firuzabadi's words, quote, our nuclear facilities have also been targeted by cyber attacks, as well as networks like fuel distribution, municipal networks, transportation networks, ports, and similar sectors. These are just part of a long list of various areas across the country that have been attacked, quote unquote. And this has happened all throughout the nation of Iran as they have had to fend off uh, some successfully, most unsuccessfully. They've had to attempt to thwart and fend off numerous massive cyber attacks to all three branches of their government. That is, again, the judiciary, the legislative and the executive branch. And now you hear that even their nuclear facilities have not been spared by cyber attacks. In fact, a lot of these cyber attacks are still presently ongoing and they are still considered to be severe in nature. So that will conclude your short and to the point news update for October the 13th. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up eSword, which is my online digital Bible program. And we're going to go to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 1 through 4. Uh, this is the saving gospel message. This is how you are saved if you believe this in your heart alone. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to 
the scriptures. Again, that is the gospel, the good news, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Again, that right there is how you were saved if you believe that in your heart alone. Uh, specifically, that emphasized critical portion of the message, which states that effectively Jesus Christ is the Son of God, God the Son, the second part of the Trinity. He died on the cross, shedding his precious purifying blood for the remission of all mankind's sins, that's past, present, and future sins. He was buried in the tomb three days, proving that he was dead, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, for our justification and therefore our salvation. As Jesus did all the work, he did the work so that we didn't have to, so that we would never have to. All we have to do is place our faith in the work that he did. Really is that simple. You see, God the Father loved the world enough, right? Hates our sin, but he loved us, still loves us, will always love us enough to have sent his son, his only begotten son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to pay the sin debt of mankind once and for all so that all those who believe in him will not die spiritually, but instead will have everlasting life. It's really as simple as that. Effectively, God loved us enough to give us a choice. Do you want to believe in Christ alone for your salvation and eternal security? Or do you want to continue to wallow around in unbelief? The choice is yours. But if God hadn't sent Christ, humanity would have never had a choice. They would have never truly had a choice. It is Christ alone that provides the all-sufficient sacrifice. And if you place your faith in him, you will be saved at that exact instantaneous moment, and you will be sealed with the Holy Spirit unto the day of redemption. That is a paraphrase of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. I want to read John 3, verse 16 through 18 as I believe they tie in beautifully with the saving gospel message. It says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son, of God. Really is that simple, folks. If you have not placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ alone for your salvation and eternal security, I pray that right now would be the moment of salvation for you. Let me tell you something. Time's ticking. Believe me. Time is ticking. Right? Look around. Take a good look around you. Sit in a pretty world. Technically, it hasn't been a pretty world since sin entered it back in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve rebelled against God as depicted in Genesis 3. It's not a pretty world. But even so now, I would argue it's even more horrible now, as it's supposed to be. This is all leading to the moment where the rapture will happen, right? Because mind you, nothing needs to happen for the rapture to happen can happen in the blink of the eye, the twinkling of the eye. The rapture can happen at any moment. And once it does, not too long after that, you're going to have the Antichrist arrive onto the scene. You're going to have the seven-year tribulation period be enacted. Uh, you're going to have that conclude with the Battle of Armageddon, second coming of Christ. You're going to have the millennium. You're going to have your, your appropriate judgments, right? The Bema Seat for believers, the Great White Throne for non-believers. And then eventually, you're just going to have flat-out eternity. The heavens and the earth being remade, and it's eternity. I pray that you believe on Christ alone now while you have the chance, so that you could be on the right side of eternity, and not the wrong one. Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, two of my all-time favorite verses throughout all of Scripture, puts the meaning of grace uh, really into perspective, just how simple and straightforward 
and beautiful it is. Ephesians 2 verse 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We know that grace by definition is getting what we don't deserve, which God has offered to us as the free gift of salvation. And we accept and receive that free gift once and for all, past, present, and future, by faith alone, in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ alone. It's really that simple. Believe on Christ alone now, while you still have the chance. That's where I'm going to leave you all off at for this video. I will see you all in the next video message, whenever it is, should the Lord, Terry is coming. Otherwise, God bless you all. All right, take care.